PC building enthusiasts now have had solid state drives for quite a while. We know what it's like to go to an SSD from a hard drive. It's nearly a requirement in a modern build, aside from the cheapest of the cheap. Our brethren over in the console camp sadly don't know what it's like. They have to go buy a separate solid state drive, throw it into an enclosure or open the thing up and install it. And it's just, it's, it makes me so sad that I nearly want to open a charity to distribute SSDs for them. But what we're gonna do instead is test the boot times and other game launch and load times between an SSD externally and an internal hard drive because that alone is massive. We're not even talking about opening the thing. This is something so simple that anyone pretty much could do it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly, makers of the Conductonaut liquid metal that we recently used to drop 20 degrees off of our temperatures Thermal Grizzly also makes traditional thermal compounds for use on top of the IHS, like Cryonaut and Hydronaut pastes. Learn more at the link below. So we looked into the option of doing an internal replacement. It wouldn't be hard. We've obviously opened the thing before. I mean, there's a thermocouple sticking out of it. It doesn't come like that. So it's not too difficult to open it. We have a whole video on opening the Xbox One X. And the, the thing is that you do have to do some work with cloning the drive because Microsoft does not officially support an internal drive replacement. In fact, they still have some types of copy protection on it that make it a little bit annoying to properly clone the drives. Sony has done a great job of it. From what we understand, Sony's is basically a flap in the bottom of the console that anyone can open up and replace the drive, and it basically goes. So if you've got a PlayStation, you're in good shape already. But we decided to simplify it and just do an external drive we picked up a Crucial MX500 SSD for this. They're relatively cheap. This is a 500 gigabyte drive. Threw a bunch of games on it and let it go. So the one terabyte drive that's in here is a Seagate model drive. It's an ST1000LM035, which is absolutely positively a 5400 RPM drive. Some reason people argued with that when we first opened the thing, even though the data sheets say 5400 RPM. So no, it is not 7200. And even with the data sheet suggesting a 140 megabyte per second peak transfer rate, we're talking a hard drive here. It's a physical spinning disk. It has to seek to find the data and bursted speeds are not the same as sustained speeds. And even more important, hard drives are particularly bad at random operations, 4K IOPS, things like that. So that's where an SSD excels and either way, the hard drive internally is not bottlenecking on the SATA 3 interface that the Xbox uses. And this is where I want to talk to the console users who may not know who we are for a moment. Everyone else in the PC audience, I'm sure you know the difference between the rated speed of an interface and the speed of a device. For a console, if you've got a SATA 3 interface in there that does 6 gigabits per second, but your hard drive does a lot less than that, it doesn't really matter. In fact, we can use this USB 3.0, 4.8 gigabit per second cable, which is obviously lower than six, and still get faster speeds. And that's just because we're limited by the speed of the device, in the case of the hard drive, not the speed of the interface. So I know that's super basic stuff for a lot of you, but we might be talking to a slightly different audience here. So I wanted to put that out there. Let's get into the benchmarks for this. We tested five games, which is a mix of titles that we've already benchmarked with our in-house benchmark utility, frame rate measurement utility for Xbox. And uh, we also included one game that we might test in the future. Launch times were measured from the time that the game was selected to the first on-screen prompt. So that would be like press A to start, for example. And we have more details in the test methodology section and the article linked in the description below if you want to know precisely when we started and stopped our measurement procedure. Some variants can be expected depending on how long server connections take for multiplayer games and test to test variants for Monster Hunter and PUBG was a bit higher in this test than the others. On the other hand, Destiny 2's launch times were extremely reliable and the SSD shaved off nearly 19 seconds or 33.7% reduction. Four of the games we tested had save files that could be loaded and all of them benefited from an SSD. For the Destiny 2 campaign test, we used a character that had partly completed the first mission of the campaign so that they would load directly into gameplay. For the farm test, we timed launching into the farm hub level from orbit. Final Fantasy 15 has the most gain from an SSD with a load time reduction 
of 66.5%. That saves at 44 seconds, not counting the time saved from launching the game. Final Fantasy XV load times are notoriously bad, and this doesn't bode well for PC players that don't have 100 plus gigabytes to spare on their SSDs, when that comes out later anyway. PUBG doesn't have a save file to load, but it does have something we've complained about in the past, obnoxiously slow texture pop-in. The easiest place to measure this is in the main menu, but our avatars at 3 second transformation from oily hot dog man to fully textured human wasn't improved enough to be reliably measured. It was reliably bad though. The time from the end of the previous test period to the final texture pop, called menu load in the chart, was reduced by a few seconds, but most of the time saving happens before the character appears on screen. We considered testing texture load times in-game, but it's hard to create a reproducible test, although this was a large part of why we wanted to try an SSD in the first place. The bottom line is that an SSD won't solve the pop-in problems with PUBG, and it's still noticeably bad. There are three Monster Hunter times logged in the chart as well due to the nature of the game. The first is just regular load time, or how long it took us to load from the main menu to the hub level. Capcom's servers were helpfully busted during testing, so we were able to play offline only. The multiplayer was just not functional. The next period is the preparation phase of a quest, and this would normally be when matchmaking happens and party members join, but it took a good 30 seconds when choosing a single player quest in offline mode, so some kind of loading is still happening here. This had a lot of variants run to run. The final period is between departing on the quest and actually appearing in the new level. Of the three, the initial load time was the most reliable, and with an SSD it was reduced by 33.8% over hard drive load time. Using an external SSD with the Xbox One X then is pretty useful and actually worthwhile. Because we're seeing massive reductions in some of these games. GTA V would probably be about equivalent to Final Fantasy XV. With Final Fantasy XV, we're talking like 40 seconds for the load screen that was tested. Every time you load something, or fast travel or whatever, every loading screen, if you're saving 34% of your time to 65% of your time in the case of Final Fantasy, that's a lot of time. 40 seconds for every load screen adds up. It's not about like getting minutes of your life back. That's kind of overdoing it a bit. It's more about just how frustrating it is to sit there staring at a loading screen for 70 seconds. That's abnormally long in this day and age. So we would say it's worth doing an external drive. Obviously the ideal thing to do would be replace it with an internal one terabyte SSD or something like that. It's not too difficult. Opening the console is easy. Replacing it at a hardware level is easy. We have videos that show how you would open it up. Uh, the more kind of difficult part is cloning of the drive and getting around copy protection. iFixit has a good guide and a script you can run that will do most of that for you. If you want to go that route, uh, iFixit does have a solution. And the one thing here that we wanted to point out is that Microsoft has made it pretty hard to replace the drive and it'll look interesting, it'll look pretty bad, I think, on them if they release a SKU with an SSD in the future. It seems like they kind of left the door open for that, but with flash prices the way they are, that might not happen. It might make more sense to just wait for the next generation console. So either way, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward content. SSDs are good. <laughs> Welcome to the future, console players. Um, hopefully the, the next generation actually has SSDs because, I mean, it's seriously, it's, it's a major difference. Even if they just did some kind of cache drive solution, like an Optane equivalent, that would be a big deal for the future, and it would be cheaper than an SSD. So we'll see. These were in development for a long time before the new cache drives started coming out. So uh, anyway, that's the, that's the content for this one. Subscribe for more. You can check our Xbox benchmarks on the channel if you're interested, or all the PC stuff, obviously. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly, or store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one, or one of our sweet stickers that we stuck on the Xbox, and it hasn't even melted off yet. So it's actually, it's a pretty good uh, test case. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time. <clears throat> Actions take for multiplayer games and test to test variants for Monter, Monter, Monter Hunter.